warrants, ingredients, and pricing. What is a warrant made out of? So warrants that you can see on the market, it will have things like Supermax, Supermax C98 for example, the price of it will have, Supermax price will be 20, 30, 16 cents, exercise price is 9 cents, time to expiry is next year, May 2021, ratio is 12 to 1, volatility, blah 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 blah. And these are all the things that make their ingredients of a structured warrant. The question I want to answer right now is, can you actually create on Excel your own structured warrant pricing and create your own live matrix? Yes, you can, but it will be inaccurate because of the ingredients of a structured warrant. So you can use, it's already available, you can check it out online, you can Google it right now if you want. Most issuers, they use the Black Scholes Merton option pricing formula or they use the binomial trinomial formula which you can get it all online and you can dump it into your own Excel spreadsheet and calculate it yourself. But the problem with this is you don't actually know three key components to this six ingredient cake. So you're not sure exactly what the issuer puts for dividends, you're not sure what interest rate they use, you don't know what the volatility is. So your cake is, you know what goes into the cake but you don't know what proportion goes into it. So once the issuer actually puts it into the formula, there will be the output, which is the actual Supermax C98. It will be trading at 142 on the US, for example, and intrinsic value. How do you actually calculate the fair value or intrinsic value of a warrant? Easy. 23, which is the price, minus this, excise price, divided by 12, which is the ratio. And that is going to be 117. That's the intrinsic value. The remaining is the time value. So if you actually see in the live matrix over here, Supermax C98 again, which I dragged on, 142. Right. But what is the actual intrinsic value? 117, which you can calculate using that formula. And earlier I mentioned that we have timestamps on the live matrix to show what time it was uploaded. The timestamp is live. Obviously, I screenshot that on 5th August as I was preparing this slide. Something that I really want to highlight in this video is exercise ratios. Recently, there has been a high volume and high turnover on exercise on stocks with very high exercise ratios. For example, this is exercise ratio. And they can be something like 100 to 1. That is bad. The reason for this is when there is a high exercise ratio, 100 to 1 for example, it makes the, the warrants that you're trading very insensitive. So if you have a warrant that has a high exercise ratio, its sensitivity can be something like 50 ticks, 60 ticks, 70 ticks. So that means the underlying must move 50, 60, 70 cents for example, for you to even break even because you're buying on the ask price, right? So it's very insensitive. I would say for issuers that issue a, a warrant with a ratio of 100 to 1 for a uh, underlying that is 20 ringgit, just avoid. And especially if they don't offer a live matrix, just avoid that warrant. And I've got a few people coming crying to me, I don't know what to say. Call up the issuer that does that, okay? Make some noise, give them a hard time. But I'm telling you right now, if it has exercise ratio of 100 to 1, avoid it if it's for equity. A good rule of thumb to remember is for retailers is this. So you have a 10 to 1, for example, and the stock price can be RM10, 20, 30, 40. If it's an exercise ratio of, say, 100 to 1, then a rule of thumb would be the stock has to be a RM100, 200, 400, 600 or so. And that can be the price of the index then it's alright to have a few hundred exercise ratio. If you have a stock price that is a thousand ringgit, for example, or say USD, you have a thousand USD stock, like Google, Alphabet, that's a thousand US dollars. Amazon is three thousand US dollars, for example. Alibaba is over here about 30. You know, then you kind of know what ratio is fair. Say if you got this one, this one would be a thousand. You can have something like Google, Alphabet, for 100, it can be something like uh, Facebook, 
300 Netflix, 30 will be Alibaba. Then you kind of know that the exercise ratio must correspond with the underlying share price. If it doesn't, that means I would just say avoid that warrant altogether. Because a high exercise ratio that is not corresponding, if I'm using an exercise ratio of 100 for a stock which is on this side, it's going to be very insensitive. The cake has been cut to too many pieces. The cake has been cut into 100 pieces. You'll get a nibble of the cake before you can even break even or feel satisfied. So just avoid those. And just to add on, if you forget, ratio should be the same, roughly the same divisor. New issuances and size and duration of them. A lot of individuals have asked us, why don't you issue, for example, Notion, which is a dollar eighty, MTag, which is a dollar, for example. But Sapura, Armada, there are twenty cents, ten cents. How come we can issue structured warrants on Sapura, Armada, but you can't issue on those? It is because of Bursa's regulation. There is a very strict rule that we follow to, which we've summarized onto our telegram over here, and that is. We actually need to follow Bursa's listing requirement where the underlying must have an average daily market cap of at least 1 billion track records in the past three months. So once it breaks that market cap of 1 billion, it has to stay there every single day for three months before issuers can issue warrants on it. And also another question that we get is what is the size and duration of an issuance? For according to Bursa's listing requirements, the minimum issue size should be more than 5 million and a tenure between six months to five years. I mentioned that earlier as well. So if you look over here, this is Bursa's listing requirements for structured warrants. And this is what happens. We just summarize it. So that answers your question very easily.